so basically if you're going to be coming as a student you have the 20 hours um per week max you can only work for 20 hours but of course if you're coming as a skilled worker you are allowed to work full time hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel if it's your first time here you're welcome my name is Bemi Olatunji and i am a biomedical scientist in the united kingdom i make content about um biomedical science in the united kingdom here and there i'm currently um still in school but then i try to also share information about um working in the united kingdom as a biomedical scientist or a med lab scientist i'm nigerian i trained in nigeria and yeah i like to also share contents that will be like really beneficial to nigerians and africans at large so if you're interested in any of those content i would like for you to click the subscribe button to join my family and then you can also go back to my previous videos to see if you find anyone that is educative or um, informative that you might like and yeah without further ado let's get into the business of the day so guys in today's video i'm going to be comparing the two very common routes that med lab scientists leave africa nigeria ghana to the united kingdom with we have two very popular ones like i said they are popular but that does not mean that's the only route you can come in through other routes but i'm just going to be addressing these two which is either you come as a student the first route i'll be comparing is the student route coming to the united kingdom for maybe your masters as a student or coming to the united kingdom as a skilled worker skilled worker by a medical scientist okay now without further ado let's get into the video i've said this before i'm going to be using I have about five points that I'm going to be using to compare and contrast these two particular um, routes in which you can come to the United Kingdom. And if you're interested in content like this, let's get into the video. First point I'm going to be talking about is, you know, the whole process. So if you want to come to the United Kingdom as a biomedical scientist, like you want to get a job from overseas, like from wherever in the country you are you didn't you didn't train in the uk and you're not you didn't train in the uk then you obviously have to do the hcpc i have loads of videos about hcpc the registration the process and everything you basically need to know um how it how long it takes the documents you need i, I have tons of videos on that so um i would like for you to like check out those videos if you do not know uh, much about hcpc so if you want to come to the united kingdom like as uh, uh if you want to work whether you're already in the united kingdom or not if you want to work as a biomedical scientist in the in the uk you have to do your hcpc um yeah so that's the step you need to take before you can now so the hcpc is just basically a license then you get your license and then you can start applying for a job right it's just like a license to practice as a united, um, as a biomedical scientist um, I don't want to go into too much details about HCPC. You should check out my previous video about HCPC. If you want to come to the UK as a student, of course, you need to like get your admission. Yeah, that's what you'll be trying to get an admission. So, whilst for the um, skilled worker biomedical scientist, you need your HCPC. For the student biomedical scientist, you need to secure an admission. Of course, for different schools have different requirements before they give you an admission. Some of them you might need to uh you need like different things you need like personal statements so some things like that some schools don't need like you to write IELTS some schools might require you to write IELTS you might need to do interview so it all depends on your school but basically the step as a student is to get an admission let's say you've gotten um after the whole process you've gotten the job and you've gotten the admission yes so if you're trying to come as a student you have to get the admission while if you're trying to come as a skilled worker you have to get a job and the requirements to get a job like i said is you you have to do your hcpc then apply for jobs and have interviews and then you get a job while for a student you have to like secure an admission and yeah different schools require different things for to get to give you an admission okay so now you've gotten the admission as a student or you've gotten the job as um a skilled worker what is the next thing you do? The next thing you do is to apply for your visa. Now, the visa type is the next um, um, point that I'm going to be um, talking about. So, if you're a student, you're going to be applying for the tier 4 visa, which is the student visa. And if you're um, going to be coming with the job, you're going to be applying for the tier 2 visa. So, these two visas, of course, they cost differently. I think the student visa is more expensive. 
I'm not sure of any of this course and I don't really want to talk about a course here because from what I have heard like the the cost of these things like sometimes they fluctuate they can be higher they can be lower so I don't really want to like say a price and then when you want to like maybe you check and then you find out that it's not the it's not the particular price but basically the student visa is more expensive and now apart from um if you're coming as a student apart from the student visa you're going to have to do the ihs the ihs is called uh it means immigration health surcharge which means like it's like an insurance for your health that once if you fall sick at any time um you're you're, you're basically insured like you're registered so it depend if your course is for two years for the two years while you're in school you you have your um, insurance and that means anytime you're sick you can basically once you register with your gp you go to the hospital you don't need to pay but for the tier 2 visa you don't actually need that particular um, you won't pay that the ihs costs like about it's it's quite pricey too so which uh, makes the cost for a student visa way higher than that of the tier 2 visa because for the tier 2 visa you don't pay any Im immigration health surcharge but for your student visa you pay for your student visa and also your uh, ihs so in terms of cost for the in terms of the visa type first of all the students is called tier 2 visa student visa and you pay for both the visa and the ihs but for the um job like if you get a job skilled worker it's called the tier 2 visa and you do not pay for ihs so um the student visa actually costs more than the um tier 2 visa um the whole process in general definitely coming as a student is going to cost you way more because you're going to be spending ten thousand so depending on your school you might you would spend you probably need more than ten thousand pounds um because you have to pay your tuition fee you have to pay for your visa you have to pay for your flight you have to pay for like so many things so generally the student route is more expensive um some people are lucky to get like um scholarships maybe if you have a scholarship the the cost is going to be quite like reduced on you but then if you do not have a scholarship is going to be quite pricey. so in terms of price definitely definitely the student route costs so much money because you need your proof of funds you need to pay for your like there's a lot a whole lot of things you need to pay like it can cost up to like fifteen thousand pounds or more depending on your school fee depending on your tuition fee right so yeah but if is if you're coming as a job like you're coming with a job like on a tier two visa generally like you might not spend more than two thousand pounds let um the hcpc the whole process of the hcpc cost about um uh, maybe 700 pounds because you have to pay for your screening fee which is 560 pounds and you have to pay for like registration thereafter so um yeah the hcpc registration can cost you up to like um it can cost you up to like 700 pounds um and i think your the visa for the tier two is about 300 pounds or so so um yeah depending on the job you get some jobs um they are going to even pay for your flight ticket i know it's not that common but then there are like few cases where the 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 employer pays for your flight ticket gives you um, accommodation for like your first few months your uh, employer can also um you know help you here and there so basically but that's maybe though but basically like generally school if you're coming um, as a student you're going to spend more way more money than you would spend if you're coming as um uh skilled worker next thing i'm going to be talking about now is the the job opportunities like the kind of job you'll be doing so basically if you're going to be coming as a student you have the 20 hours um per week max you can only work for 20 hours but of course if you're coming as a skilled worker you are allowed to work full-time as a student you're allowed to work part-time with 20 hours max and as a as a full-time staff you're allowed to work you know 40 hours per week and now of course um most jobs that students do here are like menial jobs you know things like cleaning care um, um like most of the jobs like attendance maybe um kitchen at porter you know most of the jobs that students do pretty much are more or less like um those you know petty jobs 
that let's just refactual warehouse and all and those jobs pay like less per hour meanwhile if uh and meanwhile you're still going to be working on 20 hours so that means definitely like the money you'll be able to work for is not that it's not going to be that much you know at the end of the month by the time you get your probably your pay sleep at the end of the week it's not going to be so much like it's just going to probably be able to cater for you know your 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 immediate needs but of course if you're coming with a skilled worker visa you're going to be working professionally first of all you're going to be a biomedical scientist which like is a is a noble profession here and you're going to be any like quite good pay your pay per hour is going to be like way i am higher and then um you're going to be working full time so basically you'll be able to like afford like lots of things that a student might not be able to afford which is quite logical because regardless of your degree most times like your uh it's not like as a student you can't really get um biomedical scientist job but it's just that since you have the 20 hours work limit um it might not be easy for you to get your actual professional job so that is why most times students tend to do like you know those easy petty jobs here and there because those ones might not mind you working for just 20 hours so while you work full time as a, a in a skilled worker visa as a student you're going to be working part time which means that less money um from jobs as a student and more money from jobs as a um a full time like skilled worker visa so guys the first point that i'll be talking about is the kind of jobs you can apply for so yes you come as a student um you just say let's say you come as a student you come and you do your masters and you already have your master's, especially you have your master's from the UK and you do your licensing, you get your HCPC because you you have like a higher degree or a higher qualification, um, you can apply for higher jobs, like higher bands. Um, so basically here in the NHS, they have like different bands, I think based on your qualifications. So because you've done your master's, like, and you've done your master's in UK, as a, you come as a student, you do your master's in UK. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You have the, the opportunity to actually apply for higher ranking jobs than let's say you just, um, let's say majority of people who leave Nigeria, um, as a biome um as with the hcpc most times like most people just have like the bsc and uh, the bmls that's the bachelor's and they cannot obviously apply for like if you don't have your master's you might not be able to apply for like jobs that are higher grade or higher bands like band six band seven i don't know if you get what i mean so basically i'm trying to say that if you come as a student you at the end of your program when you want to apply for a job you have the opportunity of applying for higher levels of jobs because of your more qualification than if you had just come straight um as a biomedical scientist from nigeria um maybe with you just had your bsc so at the end of the day yes the first you know the first year and all might be working but it might be able to pay off because you tend to be more qualified have a higher qualification and therefore able to apply for higher ranking jobs than if you had come directly but then some people also you know have done their masters maybe like back home so they can also still apply for like higher ranking jobs but the point i'm just trying to make is that if you come to do your masters over here when you're done with your degree and you've done your licensing you are opportune to apply for higher levels of jobs i have higher grade higher band higher job bands than if um somebody who just probably came you know after a bsc um straight to the uk like with a job um the last point i'm going to be talking about is that for me personally i believe that if you come as a student you tend to have like um a greater or more people in your circle like you tend to have uh it's easy to build a community or to have a community of friends because i mean there's so many uh, you you be in class so you tend to have like many classmates most of you you know are uh, from probably the same country you guys like know each other some sometimes we have people who are classmates who came to the same school you know so it's easier for you to like blend and make friends you know you will probably not feel that lonely because you have like you know friends around like you're going to school so it's easier for you to make friends it's easier for you to have like a community of you know like it's it will feel, kind of feel like home away from home because it about it is that there are so many africans who come 
you know every year for their masters so you'll be able to like make a kind of circle of friends you know from your country like all nigerians and people speak same language people can vibe and all you know compared to like if you come as a skilled worker you you might probably be the only white or the only black you know scientists in your whole in the in the hospital that you work in and you know the vibe is just kind of different when you're in school you tend to have like more people around you know you tend to have like colleagues like relatable colleagues but if you're like going to work you know it might just be a little bit harder for you to like meet um like people from your country yeah basically those are like all the differences that I've been able to put together. But I want to conclude by saying that I believe that the both routes um, I talked about are good. Uh, it's, it's left for you to choose which one you want and which one you have the means of, you know, using. I, I don't think anyone is superior to the other. I was just comparing so that you probably have an idea if you're trying to choose you would see like this few points and you'll be able to decide which one you can go for yeah at the end of the day i feel like they're all good anyone you have the um, opportunity for is fine i'm not saying that this is better than this or this is better than that okay um anyways i've come to the end of this video thank you so much for watching um i hope you enjoyed the video i would like for you to um subscribe if you want to those points give the video a like um share to people who you think is going to be important too and i'll see you in my next video bye